You know, folks, we talk a whole lot on here about how everything from the right is projection. Whoever they are, whatever they are, they project it onto everyone else. And one of the common cliches we hear coming from the right, from every right-wing influencer and talking head out there, is that Joe Biden can't complete a sentence. And if Joe Biden stutters one time, or if Joe Biden pauses before he answers, they will hook together a reel. Joe Rogan's notorious for this. They'll hook together a reel of him sort of pausing or him stuttering, and they'll say, Joe Biden can't complete a sentence. But they will turn a complete blind eye while Donald Trump not only has trouble completing sentences, but can't pronounce words and comes up with words we've never even heard of before. That's Donald Trump. And d Knight's here to talk more about this. And folks, if you haven't already, go over to his channel. It is Pardon the Insurrection Podcast. I'll tag it below. And Dee's going to talk about all of the gas and all of the train wrecks that Trump has been having lately. Take a look at this. The economy is crashing with the GOP growth plunging by more than 50%. Yo, what up? This is d Knight from the Pardon the Insurrection Podcast. Coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee, on behalf of my good friend, Mr. Tennessee Brando. And let's make sure that GOP growth keeps imploding by hitting the subscribe button if you haven't done that already. And Trump has been complaining nonstop about how his criminal trial has been preventing him from getting out on the campaign trail, even though he's had three to four days per week with no proceedings. And all he shows him doing his free time is golf. But he did eventually make his way out onto the campaign trail. And I got to tell you, he put on a show for the fucking ages. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. Bye, show for the ages. Clearly, it was a shit show. Biden was in office three years ago, so maybe he's cutting an ad for the Biden campaign. No idea. But he did have one salient point about one of President Biden's largest legislative victories work out too well. $1.2 trillion for their fake infrastructure. He Sounds like he plans on setting up a good old infrastructure pair a week in his next administration. It's probably two weeks away from announcing his health care plan. But I'm assuming that his suits must not be fitting too comfortably here lately because he announced that he's going to start making some dietary changes. We're honored to be joined today by Shanna Gray, who owns a vegan restaurant, supposed to be really good. I have, I'm not into the vegan stuff, I must say, but I'm going to have to try this. Well, at least we know that if he makes it back in the office somehow, he won't be banning the citizens of Vega. Let's play another clip. A smaller version, but it's even more bacocked. OK, it's even it's even worse. I don't know about you, but I've never been bacocked. Not that I judge, like, you know, whatever you're into, no kink shaming here. It's totally fine with me. But clearly David Packer's testimony is still fresh on his mind. And he's facing so many criminal trials that you'll never guess which witness he decided to make public comments about next. Instead, David, I want to go down. The These people are crazy. And then I think she changed her testimony. You heard that because the people testified that none of this stuff happened. But a friend of mine said, you shouldn't fight that. Because I gained such respect. I didn't know that you were that strong and that tough that you would take on a black belt in karate or whatever the hell he was. A very tough guy, I can tell you that. There were muscles all over the place on his ears, on his neck. If I grabbed him around the neck, I'm not even sure he'd feel it. He might not feel it. Now, these people are crazy. That was Trump commenting on Cassidy Hutchinson, who testified to the January 6th committee that Trump was so determined to get to the Capitol on January 6th that he nearly had an altercation with the Secret Service agent who refused to take him. Trump's previously said that never happened. Here's Trump telling you that he did, in fact, tell the Secret Service agent to take him to the Capitol on January 6th. It's crazy stuff. I sat in the back. And you know what I did say? I said, I'd like to go down there because I see a lot of people walking down. They said, sir, it's better if you don't. I said, well, I'd like to. I'd better if you don't. All right. Whatever you guys think is fine. That was the whole talk. Well, that'll be evidence that's introduced at a criminal trial. By the way, how did Secret Service know that it was a bad idea for Trump to go to the Capitol on January 6th? And that's why they deleted their text messages. But the insanity did not stop there because, of course, it didn't. On day one of the Trump presidency, I'm restoring the travel ban, suspending refugee admissions. 
Great. He's bringing back the Muslim ban. Someone should protest that. Anyway, that wasn't all. He left Wisconsin to head to Michigan, and he started off with the perfect way to fire up Michigan voters. United Auto Workers, I just want to tell you, the head of the United Auto Workers has really let you down to agree with that whole situation that they just did. Because what workers would want record pay increases? Aren't we all like fighting with our boss to get them to pay us less and less money? For Christ's sakes. I wonder what other ideas he had about the auto industry. Because if you told me you want to have her and if somebody wanted to fight me on gas power, then we can't make your auto industry gate. We got to make America gate again. (laughs) This man's brain glitches constantly. But he did get to some of the important issues that voters in Michigan absolutely care about. This, They also want to take your gas stoves. They want to give you very little water in your dishwashers and your washing machines. You know, they want washing machines with very little water. And I'm talking about in states like your state, you don't have a water problem. You do have a water problem. You have too much water. They want to take your water out of your washing machines, your dishwashers. They want to put water restrictors on your sinks and showers. You know, I ended all of that. People would buy a new home and they were so proud and they'd say, darling, it's so good. There's only one problem, darling, the sink. No water comes out like drip, drip, drip. And darling, I have beautiful hair, but I can't do anything because in the shower, the water doesn't come out. Darling, I want to get out of this house. I hate it. And I say to him, take off the restrictor. But now they made the restrictor where you can't take it off unless you have a blowtorch. Okay, like our auto workers do, actually. They want your apartments and homes with small windows and every other crazy thing they can think of. They don't want you to have large windows because they're not as good with the sun. Actually, in many cases, they're better. I don't know what his obsession is with water pressure. Maybe he's struggling to flush his shorts. And given the Flint crisis, if only he'd cared about water in Michigan this much when he was president. But speaking of things that Trump is responsible for going to short. It's up to the states, and I want to thank the Supreme Court justices for having the courage. Uh, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, John Roberts, Brett Kavanaugh, Neil Gorsuch, Amy Coney Barrett, for the wisdom and the courage to do this. This took a great deal of courage and a great deal of wisdom to do this. Of course, he wants to thank the individuals who are about to rule on whether or not he has criminal immunity for trying to overthrow the government for one of the most unpopular decisions they've ever made. You've got to wonder if those decisions have made him unpopular. These are very unpopular. I'm not unpopular. We had 94 percent, 95 percent popularity in the Republican Party. I'm not unpopular. He's losing hundreds of thousands of votes to Nikki Haley, who's been out of the primary race for months now. But sure, boss, let's hear about all of those policies that are making you so popular. And on day one, we will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. Hope you're excited for your internment camp. I know I am. Can't wait till he sends me back to Africa, you know, the continent that I nor anyone in my family's ever been to. But after promising to unleash the military on American citizens, let's hear how he feels about our veterans. Our vets aren't treating as well. They're not being treated as well. Well, that's one way to support the people you consider to be suckers and losers. But in closing, Trump made an argument as to who you should vote for in November. Continue any longer. Three years ago, we were a great nation and we will soon be a great nation again. He really doesn't know who was president three years ago, does he? (laughs) I feel as though someone advised him to stop making that Reagan-esque argument of, were you better off four years ago? Because they don't want him reminding everyone how he almost destroyed the country in the middle of a pandemic. But Trump was right about one thing there. President Biden is doing his best to make sure this country is great. And if you enjoyed this video and you don't want to be put in a concentration camp in 2025, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and please leave your thoughts in the comments below. And you can find me on my personal podcast, Pardon the Interaction, available everywhere podcasts are found.